That's when you come to life, right? So you like to get up on the you know, Come to life. Here it is. Look right there. You can do it to me again. Every time we start this show, he got, he starts on my show, and it hurts, Bob. He hurts. Good morning, everybody. We're coming to you live right here from inside the main build facility of Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. I'm Tom. We all know the shoot you and Master Diesel, the ladies' man. Look at that. How about that? Say good morning, D. And we all know the master, the one of the top three builders in the world today. Bubba, good morning, Bub. How we doing? Doing really good so far, man. Just got a lot of stuff going on here. It is beautiful down here in South Florida, probably like 75 degrees. That was up till about 15 minutes ago. Then it just started downpouring. You're going to want your shoe for when you walk outside. You are. It's already got holes in it. I think he thinks he might be a baby elephant, dude, because he's just flopping that thing everywhere. Nozzling. Yes. How about that? How yep. you been today, Bob? Really good, man. Just uh, I've actually been back in the paint shop all morning long, getting a bunch of rides caught up back there. We've got a lot of pro touring builds that we are working on right now, so we've got a lot of things in the works. Who am I kidding, dude? It's a Chevrolet Equinox. That thing doesn't have 136 rear wheel horsepower if it had to. This episode is brought to you by Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. That's Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. Dot com. We are the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports daily live stream and the host of the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports podcast Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Miss Outlaw Boutique, the amazing Miss Outlaw Boutique, Robin, Layla, killing it over there, man. Those girls, the outlaws are out there, bub. The moose is loose in Abacoa. I still have no idea what that means. You have said every day for one month, the moose is loose. If you want to know what the moose is loose is all about, ladies and gentlemen, MissOutlawBoutique.com and all over Instagram, 1200 Town Center Drive, Bub, Suite 108. Cars and Coffee of Palm Beach, the Guinness World Record holding Cars and Coffee event. We will be there December 3rd, Bub, uh, 8 to noon with the Bub's Exotic Motorsports Tour Bus and the whole and the whole crew, man. We're going to take out the exotics and all of that good stuff, right, Bub? Yeah, man. Chris Harrison crew over at Palm Beach International Raceway. Can't say enough about them as well. Bub, ladies night, 1214 at the boutique. And we're going to talk street outlaws and why the street outlaws need to know about this, too. What, what are they going to know about? Men's night. Dude, so listen, so this men's night deal that is going on, this is at Miss Outlaw Boutique that is right here in our backyard. It is in Abacoa. So this place is insane, man. There is not only everything you can imagine for guys to go out and buy your girls something to wear, something to have from an accessory standpoint, maybe candles for the house, maybe the bath scrubs, those bath salt things. Man, there's so much stuff that is available at MOB. It's just insane. So 12-14, December 14th. And what does it say, from 6 to 9 or something six like that? 6 to 9 is the actual walk-in hours. However, everything's available online. Good morning to my beautiful bride, Miss Not uh, Robin, who's out there watching us right now, co-owner of Miss Outlaw Boutique, James of the Yellow, who's one of our BEM business partners. We've got a lot to talk about there, bub. And good morning to Sean Gazzo out there as well. Yeah, man. Miss Outlaw Boutique, 1219, uh, 1214, 6 to 9. Guys, I'm telling you, it is the most extravagant, exquisite, how do you pronounce, how do you say it, Bub? Edgy, catchy, country-esque, valet uh, boutique in the USA uh, by the former supermodel, your fiance, Miss Layla Von Athey, my beautiful bride, Robin, and they know how to do it. Guys, shop for your girls, it's out there. Bub, we've got a big episode today. We have been working uh, very hard behind the scenes doing what, Bub? So we are putting together a crazy, crazy amount of things here at BEM right now. We have everything from client rides to the SEMA 18 builds. How many um, how many cars are you taking to SEMA? Is it approaching double digits? Yeah, so we initially were contracted to build four. That was when we were SEMA 17. Now that we have already moved, I'd say probably three, four weeks past SEMA 17, we are already up to uh, eight cars. So we've got a lot of stuff in the works right now. It is going to probably take a lot to get these rides out there because we are completely on the other side of the U.S., but you know what? It's going to be worth it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Not only do we have those things going on, the client rides, the SEMA builds, we also have some serious stuff coming in with some guys from Street Outlaws, so we are looking forward to a lot of fun there. We've got some serious high horsepower rides that are getting ready to show up here in beautiful South Florida. 
for even more power to hit the ground. Hey, Bub, let's talk a little bit about it. Are you willing at this point to discuss or release some of the details about what's coming up with the street out outlaws, or how much are we willing to discuss? I know you and James and I have been uh, very no, quiet man, I with think, the production uh, team. I think everybody's going to have to stay tuned for it, man. If you guys want to find out more of what's coming, just stay tuned. Know that there's going to be some not only serious tire shredding rides running through the streets of South Florida, there's going to be some grunge matches that are held right here really? at the new PBIR. So it's going to be a lot of fun with a lot of guys from street outlaws out there really just laying down that rubber and seeing really who's faster. But like I say, you are considered amongst the top three in the industry today. Your technical knowledge, because you study, 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 runs from everything to this beautiful 1940 Ford sitting with us, this 1958 Fossil Vega, of which are 400 made, you wedged a 426 Hemi motor in this thing and made it a pro touring car. This gorgeous, what formerly uh, was a six cylinder or a slant six, uh, green uh, dart that you designed, now running a, what are you running in this thing? It's actually running a 340. To the, to the, I mean, it's just crazy, Bob. To the twin turbo Lambro upgrade you do, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. We've had the great time to spend, not only with James working throughout the night, putting these, uh, this uh, Street Outlaws grunge match together, which I can't give a lot of detail out yet, but we've talked to uh, Travis Santa Cruz from Street Outlaws, we've talked to Rain Varley from, in fact, I think Wayne's car is on the way into you, and so is Travis's. I believe so, yeah, man. That's, uh, you know, it's awesome, dude. Black Ops is coming in. That's a small tire car. A lot of these things, small tire cars are coming in, laying down serious, serious numbers already, but we're going to make these things just serious dominators when these things go out and take over the next set of uh, street outlaws. I'll so, Bob, that. all of these cars are going to be making an appearance at SEMA in yep. the booths of Borla. CPE, Custom Performance Engineering, you were on a very in-depth uh, design meeting with Josh yesterday mm -hmm. from CPE because one of the builds you're going to do has never been done before, just like the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports 2017 2.3 liter stock block EcoBoost that broke the 600 horsepower barrier. Yeah, man, it's uh, you know that's what we that's what we do is uh, you know we take these things and we we literally do these one-off molds and designs with all of our major sponsors out there. I mean everything from Precision to the Turbo that was just done for all of the EcoBoost 2.3 motors which in today's world, especially when you compare it to these street outlaw guys, I mean, that's nothing. I mean, that's putting down a whopping 597 at the tire. But I'll tell you what, man, for a street car, that is just an average Joe that drives it at the end of the day. I mean, that's a lot of fun. That's a pretty solid number for just driving around on an everyday pump gas street car. Um, you know, so we've got those molds completely done and now 50 state legal and out for the entire mass production to get their hands on. It's getting ready to happen with something else that just was released from a mass production standpoint as well. That's big, um, bub. So it's, it's going to be pretty cool to do that one as well. And, uh, you know, just get these huge front mount intercoolers out there, get the intercooler piping done, getting all these turbocharger upgrades available, getting everything done, the tune standpoint. So all you guys out there that have some of these newer modern performance rides that you go and pick them up off the floor at 400 horse, you want that 6, 650, 700, it's not going to be a problem at all. So, Bob, one of the things I know that one of these uh, specific, SEMA, specific, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, SEMA builds will be arriving at 7.30 Saturday morning. Uh, you have instructed your crew to immediately strip the entire interior out of that vehicle, and then it is leaving here on the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports transport driven by Nick with uh, Hi-Ho Silver Transport. It is going where? Uh, so where are these cars going? Let me think here. We've got cars coming in and going all over the place. For the front mountain, everything. Uh, so that's actually going to go up to CPE, which is Custom Performance Engineering. They are going to do full castings, full molds to do all of the upgraded build of aluminum, titanium components that are going to be the mass production side of what you, whether you have hot charge pipes, cold charge pipes, anything that you need from a turbocharge application to the front mount intercooler to the tuning. I'm going to do custom in-house here. We will get those in handheld tuners so we can just send them out. You can upload a tune ready to go and you are just ready to hit the streets. Then Travis's Black Ops is coming in, bub. You were talking that you're going to pull that car. You were having a long discussion with uh, him this morning out there in New Orleans. But first of all, let's define, let's identify for our 22 million fans around the world internationally what happened with the Discovery Series and why did the Louisiana guys get cut out of the show? Well, it's, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of different feelings on it. There's, you know, there's a lot of uh, speculation of what happened here, there, here, there. You know, all, that's what you're always going to have, especially when you're dealing with media-related things. When you're in front of the public's eye, you've got a bunch of crap people throw at it, and you never know what the true answer is. Um, but it really started coming down to the fact that all the small tire guys were getting bumped out as there were being more and more of the big tire guys that were coming in. And they were really just out there taking over the streets. These small tire guys had no chance to hang with them. So now you've got to get everything back to the street, get big tire guys, get in their corner, small tire guys, get in their corner, 
have it out in the middle. Let's see really how it's going to fall out. Is the plan then, Bub, to keep? Uh, I, I know on the do, uh, on the series that we're developing, uh, is the plan to keep the small tire guys on the small tires, or for example, in Black Ops, Travis's case, you're pulling the Procharger out of there, re you're redesigning that motor and moving it over to a Turbinetics uh, application because part of the problem was getting the power to the ground. Um, I mean, it's it's tricky, man. You cross that line eventually of too much horsepower versus being able to plant, you know, you're going to cross that line eventually. And that's typically when you go from small tire to big tire setups, um, you know, just depending on where we end up falling out with all these rides that are coming through here, it's going to be, you know, just laying that rubber to the road. You know, if you can do it on a small tire to stay in that small tire class, if that's where you want to be, that's going to be the end goal is to limit that power to where you can plant it safely and really strong to get yourself down the track, not spin three quarters of the way down the track. That's not what you want. Now you've got Wayne, uh, Barney's car coming in. It is the world famous gold car, bub. Let's talk a little bit about that. I want to say good morning to uh, Brian Tesler out there and good morning to Brandon Smith, Edward Hale, Kenny Mitchell, and Shannon, our office manager, bub. As usual, the show is explosive. You were talking a little bit to the world famous Barley yesterday. Wayne Barley, bub, the gold car. Yeah. It's on its way. I think that goes, they're picking that up Monday. That gets picked up out of Oklahoma City by the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports Transport Team, Nick, and get coming in here. So what's the story with this? So that car right now is a, uh, it's all motor. It's, uh, that thing's laying down about 900, 950 all motor right now. Pretty respectable. You're going beyond closer the four to, digits of that. Yeah, closer to 1300 on the spray. It's running a 300 shot of nitrous on it. So it's running closer to 1300. Um, but that one's had over 200 passes put on that setup, and now it's time to just take that thing and go to a whole new level. And I'll tell you what, man, that 1300 is going to sound like a small number by the time we're done. Mm. So just you are you are you are going to push uh, a considerably larger four-digit number. Oh yeah, it's going to be pretty hefty. Are you yeah. keeping the car on spray? Typically, you like you you don't like the damage that spray does to engines sometimes, and you're able to develop using power adders a crap load of power, man. Um, so right now it's natural, but I'm going to leave it up to people. Stay tuned for uh, what it's going to end up being. So we'll leave it at that. You're not going to share it. So, Bub, when you say natural, I know working for you as your father and your business manager, you're referring to naturally aspirated. Mm -hmm. What is the difference, Bub, between naturally aspirated and not naturally aspirated? So a naturally aspirated is everything that the motor does, a mechanical engine does by itself, whether it be small block, big block, doesn't matter. Naturally aspiration is nothing more than the natural induction of air coming into a motor. It is not being forced in via supercharger, ah. turbocharger, anything like that. So it is nothing more than that motor running by itself, naturally drawing in its own air, not having any sort of power adder pushing to it. So when you put a power adder to it, and when you say power adder, can you give us a definition of what a power adder is? Yeah, that would either be a turbocharger, supercharger, and uh, those are typically considered forced induction. So it's either NA or forced induction. And when you hear words, I heard words like you and Josh speaking yesterday over at uh, Customer performance engineering your your uh, engineering partner I heard you using the word direct injection yes yeah, so that's just all about your fuel injection system that's on there there's plenty of different styles out there there's there's throttle body injection styles there's direct port there's man there's multi-port there's so many different styles of fuel injection it's all about what you're trying to run um, typically if you can get away with direct injection stuff multi-port injection stuff you're getting your fuel exactly where it needs to be it's not having to go through one place and funnel down through your intake runners or anything like that so it is the better application really? to run because you are putting that fuel per cylinder it takes a lot of tuning a lot of dialing in especially when you're not working with something mass production like mm -hmm. let's say a brand new ford mustang a brand new chevrolet corvette camaro all of those come tuned ready to go so all you have to do is modify those parameters a little bit. If you maybe do a cold air intake, you do a little bit more flow, long tube headers, you're gonna add more flow in and out. So you're gonna want just to bump more fuel. You can bump those injector parameters just a touch, but you don't have to go through and tell them what to do again, because they already know what they're doing. They're set from the tune originally. All you're doing is increasing the amount that they flow. So Bub, to, uh, to understand a little bit more of what, I mean, you're a master with carbureted uh, vehicles. You're a mm -hmm. master with, with fuel injection. You just got it all. But am I understand, my, when you say to me intake manifold, I'm thinking old school, well, here's an Edelbrock Performer or Torker series that has runners, and runners are the amount of air, the, the length that air and fuel have to mm -hmm. travel to get into the combustion chamber. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're saying direct injection, are you saying that you're not dealing with as long a runner? No, you can still have, um, I mean, you can still have runners. You can have throttle body style units that literally only control air. Fast does a lot of those components where really? you've got these really tall high rises, all depending on that motor application you're building. So if you want something that runs from, 
you know, 2,500 to 7,000 RPM, that power band, you're probably gonna have something a little bit shorter. You want something a little bit on that tolerance, so 3,500, 4,000 up to 9, 10,000 RPM. Some of these motors can pull that kind of range, some cannot, depending on how they're built. You want that taller, higher power RPM, you're gonna have a taller ram system, right? So that's why sometimes you see these guys running down the track, they've got everything all stuck underneath the hood, depending on what their power band is, or they've got a huge blower coming out of the top, and that's gonna be their top end full power band car. So it does, runners do affect the, del the delivery time of the air and fuel, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it goes way deeper than that. It's not just about the way your air fuel delivery induction is, it's about the heads, heads that are on your motor, if they can flow with that kind of rate. What when you, you say flow, what are you talking about? The amount of air that they can either produce, both coming in, going out, how much combustion chamber size they have. So there's a lot you have to take into consideration when you're building these motors, especially high horsepower ones that you don't want to blow apart on two, three, four passes, doing, I mean, serious, serious, raw numbers. One of the things that we see, Bob, around the uh, facility a lot is when you're in your office with the door closed and you are literally mathematically figuring out to the nth degree everything about a motor. And your typical approach is, where do you start with the motor? I have always watched you design from the camshaft out as opposed mm -hmm. to starting from the outside and going in. No, typically, um, I mean, typically that's where I build my motors, knowing, you know, knowing what you're trying to work with in terms of that end goal, what your power band you want it to be how you want it to operate, 1,500 to 65, 2,500 to eight, 3,000 to nine, you know, wherever you're trying to work, whatever that strong power band is, that's all going to correlate through everything. It's gonna go through your heads that you put on, it's gonna go through your ignition system, the way you set it up, it's gonna go through your drivetrain, the what torque converter you're trying to lay down, how you're trying to set that flash install so you can plant that power. When, flash all, of that install. Come, when all of that comes in, when that power comes in, it's gotta lay down in the ground, right? So there's so much to take into consideration and then you've gotta start, for me, I start at the camshaft. Yes. I start at the cam knowing what my end goal is going to be, and I build everything else around that. So I know what my lower end is going to do in terms of its horsepower, the bore, the stroke. I know what I'm going to build out of it, set that camshaft, then you can start working all of those variables around it. And this is why you have math on paper and binders that are that thick. And when you, once you put it together, I've never seen a motor failure on your behalf. I've never seen a car go out of here that didn't run. I've never seen it not be reliable. I've never seen you had to go back and say, well, it's not running right. It's all so scientifically and mathematically driven for you that once you hit that key, it's alive. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, that's the way to do it, man. Just, you gotta build them, make them stout, make them seriously strong and make them really reliable. Bob, Typically that you have a lot of trouble with guys that make them a little too stout and then they're not reliable at all. So you have to skate that fine line of build something really strong that does everything you want it to do and then some and also still keep it very reliable so it's not rebuilding it every couple things. And you know, every time you want to take the thing out and you want to run it a couple passes, whether maybe you've got a strip car, maybe you've got a street car, it's so many different variables you have to take into consideration. And I think the point that you're going to make with the, uh, with the street outlaws, uh, especially the crew that was done so horribly, ter terribly, and believe me, Discovery's going to know, we've got people inside, and they're going to find out what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You're going to literally allow these to be small tire cars, if that's what they want them to be, that they can drive on the street and strip. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. So we've got to say good morning to Graham Hanna out there. I want to say good morning to uh, John, uh, oh, Chris Allen. Good morning to Chris. Good morning to John. I can't read my producer's name over there. Uh, on Andre, Andretti, senior and junior. What's up, he says. And I pronounced it right, right? And Nick Gigolo, who is the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports transport driver. Yep. So, Mr. Producer. I, I can't write all this stuff. It says that uh, senior and junior will be there on Saturday with is he come? Are they coming down with us? Are they going to come in with us, John and uh, Senior and Junior? Huh? James said they'll be on the show Saturday with you guys. Right on, man. Also, are they? Call, hey, John, are you and uh, are uh, you and your son calling it? Or are you going to physically come to the facility, man? Also, go T Bo Brian Testa will be with us. Okay, his his real name, his racer name, big big name in the Street Outlaws. Look at our crew out there looking at us. Go T Bo. Go Tebow. He is one of the best of the best. He's got balls of steel. He's going to be joining us as well, Bob. Nice, man. Yeah, we're, uh, we're having a lot of fun with it, man. It's, uh, we're going to definitely get, get a crazy group of guys together. There's going to be a lot of horsepower, uh, high horsepower rides out there. We're going to get together with Chris at PBIR, the new PBIR, and it is going to be insane, the throwdown that happens. Bob, I get to drive every one of those cars. No chance. Two of the cars. None of these cars really require keys, but I'm still not showing you how to turn them on at all. I don't care, you can sit in there and flip every switch you want. Greg, make sure all kill switches are off. Good, we got a thumbs up. You can sit in there and toggle everything you want. 
<laughs> not gonna happen. I'll hit the one that says eject and I'll be through the roof. Bye. Dad. Yeah, I, Bob, God damn, did you put Oh, for sure. Everyone, he'll just be dragging it down the road behind him. <laughs> so to our friends out there at Discovery, I know you're watching. Come on. We talked about it this morning. We got something coming for you. You see, you have the active street outlaws. I've got the street outlaws with the grunge, bub. Yep. And you're not going to be showing up, are you? No. <laughs> it's not happening, is no, it? No, it's going to be pretty solid. <laughs> you are not going to let it happen, are you? Nope. So, uh, Bob, let's talk a little bit also about some of the things you did to this beautiful dart right here. Okay, so this thing here is actually a super local client, really high-end client for us Very here at BEM. He has everything from classics to pro tourings to modern performance yeah. to lifted to lowered. I mean, he has everything you could possibly imagine in his collection. So this one we did a while back. This is a 69 Dodge Dart GTS. If you wanted to ask me, I would say this is definitely a small tire car, although this thing is nowhere near running down the quarter mile. <laughs> <laughs> this thing performs super strong, man, but it, it is just a, good a, driver, man. It's a super nice mild street car. It yeah. is a 340. It's a Mopar 340 and it hooked up to a 727. So a really nice 727 fun, being? That's a three-speed automatic that Mopar produced. Okay. So this thing is a great setup, really fun street car. From light to light around here, it is great down in South Florida, so the client loves it. We finished doing some crazy custom paint on this thing. It was literally a gold pearl that we did. We did a lot of matte you black accents. You used a Ford Mustang and, color on this. Yeah, we did actually. We used a, uh, it was like a 2000 Ford mass production Mustang color. Um, we used that and we put a lot of gold pearl on top of it, so it looks really good, man. It's got a lot of flake and uh, metallic to it, so we love the way it turned out. Of course, tended all the windows out on it, smoked out all the handles, the fuel door, but kept that vintage style street strip weld wheel on the car just because the client wanted that 70s wanted look that, to yeah, it. That feel, yeah. A little bit of rake going on on this thing, man. It runs really strong, dude. It looks good. It's just exactly what you could want. It's so reliable. It's like everything you build. No, this thing's actually pretty solid, man. Like I say, 99.9999% of what goes out these doors that you touch never comes back in these doors except for maintenance. Yeah. And even then, the guys like to tinker with their cars and do their own oil changes. Yep. Until they double gasket the oil filter and now for sure. they call and say their motor's blown. Yep. It was your fault. Probably. Uh, excuse me, can I can, can we trade and then you can put it up on the it's list. It's actually kind of funny because <laughs> we have this one client, so really, really heavy hitter in the industry. So we built his Camaro. It's a Pro Touring 69 Camaro that was just done. 68, I'm sorry. This was maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, right before Thanksgiving. Um, so this car was brought in from Barrett Jackson. We did a oh, full build on this thing. Oh, he bought six Barrett Jackson cars here. So this thing's pretty sweet looking, pretty solid. He's been out cruising this thing ever since we built this thing. We rebuilt the motor in it, right? So there were 31 miles on it. The motor was indexed wrong, as you found out, and it thrashed. Indexed way wrong, dude. I don't think that was even considered being indexed. No. I think somebody just stuck a cam in there and threw a timing set on it, dude. <laughs> but the car could never have run. No chance. So the client bought, buys this car from Barrett Jackson. The thing comes into us. It's really good looking car, right? Needed some work on it, so we brought all that love into it, but it was sold as a 383 stroker motor, Muncie four speed, 373 gear oh, in the three, rear. It was sold, professionally built 383 stroker motor. What Listen, was it? Listen, man, it was a wreck. So this thing may have been like a hodgepodge of parts that somebody found over all these swap meets and stuff all around the years and just stuck, like I said, a heads on this thing. They stuck a cam in this thing. They stuck in whatever kind of lower and rotating assembly in this thing. So all kinds of nonsense, parts mismatched everywhere. No chance was this thing at all a 383 stroker. The bore did not match. The stroke did no, come nowhere clear, close to a three and three quarter inch stroke on it. So we had to go through this thing. We got him right. So now he's been out cruising the car with a GM Performance 355 crate motor. So that's, that's what, was, that's what you found. You measured the bore and stroke in the car. You were out there like a white lab coat on, bub, and these oh, yeah. real thick bottle glasses. And you got uh, measuring tapes and the binding rods and... Mike's, and I go, Bob, what the hell are you doing? A quick, an oil experiment? And he said, no, I'm just measuring bore and stroke. This is true, not true. So we finally get the client out cruising. So first thing this morning, we check in on his rides, right? We always check on all these guys' rides. <laughs> yeah. So he's been out cruising this car, no problem at all. A lot of these guys down here, they have big money cars, they have big money. So Huge they money. don't really care. Like they leave the rides in the building to us at BEM and they leave the or enjoyment the, of the rides to themselves. Or the, in the parked in the middle of the street in the case of the Marlin yesterday. Jesus, that was a bad one. God that might have been the worst case so far. So we check in on all the rides. He's got like eight rides. We've got a Pro Touring Mustang here that we're building for him right now as well. So that thing's a 69 Mach 1. It looks really cool. You'll have to stay tuned for that. 
But we check in on the rides. He's like, yeah, man, everything's going really well. All the cars you built are all running great. But for some reason, I've been out cruising the Camaro for the past week, and all I've been smelling is rubber on the right rear side. And I look, and, like, my whole tire is shredded in my fender well and everything. <laughs> and he's just been out cruising that way. And I'm like, they, yo. They just don't care. <laughs> like, you got to tell me that there's a problem, right? <laughs> so this thing has now shredded all the paint off the quarter of the car. He's just been out cruising. The exhaust is hanging on the ground. I mean, come on. What happened there? I don't know. You're, you're thinking that the exhaust may have broken somehow. I have a feeling it did, yeah. yeah. That's what it yeah. Is. Probably. I would have heard thought that the sh -ch 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 would have been an indication something was going wrong. So we'll get that one picked up tomorrow. He was just going to drive it over here at this point. I was like, dude, just let me just pick no, it up with our don't do any damage. Yeah. And you know what, people, when you build for clients, other builders out there watching us, I'm not saying Chip Foods and all those guys who watch us. When you build for somebody, ladies and gentlemen, you have a responsibility to build quality. It's what we pin our name on. Just remember, your name and your reputation is everything, Bob. Yeah. Everything. You got a couple more shout outs there, Bob. Yes, we've got, uh, we've got James. He's out there watching, right? We've got Mitchell Adler and we've got Wayne Varley himself. And you, uh, Wayne Varley is? So he's actually running the gold car, man, and that thing will be here soon. Um, that car, I think, gets picked up when? Monday, Monday. something like that? Uh, the BEM um, transport, uh, the BEM transport. Uh, driver from Hi Ho Silver, Nick's gonna pick it up. Man. Yeah, man, we're gonna do some crazy, crazy stuff to it. So, Varley, stay tuned for what you got coming back your way because it is not gonna be the same animal you sent down. But I think, I think, I don't know, we gotta figure out the logistics and the timing of it. There is gonna be a grunge match at the world famous uh, Palm Beach International Raceway featuring uh, the uh, uh, gold car, right? Yep. Correct? And Black Ops, right? Yep. And we're gonna be bringing all the other boys down as well. Yep. Discovery, get your guys together because it's going to be ugly. We'll see if big tire cars or small tire cars are better. We'll see. Whew, it's going to be ugly, man. I need to find out what the limit is, though, for the small tire car in terms of horsepower. Sometimes limited, sometimes not. One thing you are is very, very, very researched, Bub. You study hours and hours and hours, so the actual implementation is just spot on. Yep. Another shout out, Bub. Adrian Lewis, what's up? Hey, good morning, Adrian. How are you, man? It's nice that you could join us. So, Bob, we're looking forward to all the great things coming in. One more announcement. These cars will be also seen for the public. They can see them where, Bob? Uh, where you want them to be seen. In Las Vegas? Well, that's SEMA 18. That's right. Yes, that's like a year from now. But they are going to be seen in many other places as well. Social yes. media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of those things that you guys are on, you can stay up with what we've got going on behind the scenes with all of these small tires, street outlaws, Go out to our website at bubbasexoticmotorsports.com, scroll down, and you will literally see subscribe on the left, you'll see subscribe on the right. Hit all of those. I'm telling you, anything that we do here live on the spot, sneak peeks, behind the scenes, shout outs, if we are doing VIPs, parties, you will see all of that stuff literally hit you live in your pocket on the phone so you'll never miss a beat. So ladies and gentlemen, on Saturday, we are officially announcing right now that Travis from Black Ops, Wayne from the Gold Car, other uh, out Street Outlaw drivers, yep. James will be here in person with us. I think, I know for a fact, the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports official transport uh, driver, Nick, with Hi-Ho Silver, uh, he may even, he may be here with us or he will call in. Um, but Saturday's show is going to be packed, packed, packed. Travis says, Bub, what's up? What's up, Travis? How you doing, babe? We just got off the phone with Travis talking That's Black about Ops right there. Black Ops is right there in the house, ladies and gentlemen. And you're going to get that power down to the ground, reconfigure that oh, yeah. motor as well. Yeah, I'm curious, too, to see, you know, because that's running a, uh, so 99 Trans Am Black Ops is, so that's, that's originally running a Panhard setup factory, of course. That's the way those things were built. You can plant some good power out of those things, but anything over that, 700 horse, 750, 800 horse mark in those F bodies like that. It just doesn't plant unless it's back half. So we'll have to see where that thing's at now. I'm not curious about, or I'm not, I'm not sure what rear end setups in that car now. We'll take that thing over the top and really lay it down. Top. You're gonna yeah. put some power to it? Oh, for sure. Come on. You can't, you can't have the car or back half the car without putting power in it. That's right. You can back half any car though. But I can back, I can front half it too. And I not know. even care. And side half it right? too. Good morning to the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports transport driver, Nick. With high hopes over. He's going to be up, busy Nick? getting these cars around, isn't he, Bubba? going to be a lot of cars, a lot of moving. Saturday's going to be a huge show, ladies and gentlemen. You That's going to be one good-looking rig going out to SEMA, though. I'll tell you what. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful rig. And I think we're going to I, we're going to have to take more than – we'll take our tractor trailer. Oh, out. we're going to have to. Yeah, as well. So uh, Nick is saying I'll make it happen. Okay, so the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports transport driver – the official driver who can move these cars all the way across the nation with high ho silver uh, will be with us. Cute story about that, Bub. Do you know the name of his dog and that rides with him everywhere he goes? High ho silver? Tonto. What's that have to do with high ho silver? 
Well, who was the Lone Ranger's sidekick? No idea. I've never seen the Lone Ranger, bro. Tonto! <laughs> Oh, this guy right here. Never once have I seen that movie. I can drive like a son of a bitch. No chance. At all. No? I actually drove the Porsche last night, dude. I was hitting corners pretty solid. We haven't had those out on the racetrack for a while. No, it's been a while. Right? Yeah. Till tomorrow. Keep on doing it Bubba style. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, thank you for joining us right here for Doing It Bubba Style, the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports daily live stream. We love all of you guys. Big things coming out of this crew with the street outlaws, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to get ugly, and we like ugly, and we like broken. You know what? This episode has been brought to you by Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. That's Bubba'sExoticMotorsports.com. Make sure you visit our online apparel and merchandise store. We are currently uploading 19,000 products from our big sponsors, Steeda, Borla, CPE, I mean, you name it, they're going up out there. My producer is saying something to me and I don't understand his sign language. Go. Nick says it's Tanto. Tanto, Tonto. You say tomato, I say potato. How's that? Right, ladies and gentlemen? Miss Outlaw Boutique, the stunning ladies at Miss Outlaw Boutique, 1200 Town Center Drive, ladies and gentlemen. I need all of the street outlaw drivers to go out there and get their wife something amazing. Man, you get them really dressed up in that stuff that Layla and Robin are putting out there. Guys, whew, those beautiful country dresses with those cowboy boots. Oh, my God. That's how Robin comes home. Hello. Can you imagine why I'm in so much trouble? MissOutlawBoutique.com. 1200 Town Center Drive, Suite 108. The beautiful Robin is over there right now, 660-6695. Just pick up the phone, guys. Seriously, I swear to God, 561-561-660-6695. And just say you're with the Street Outlaw crew, Tom told you to call. And then just talk with her. She's fun. But blow her phones up for like five minutes. you got to make people's lives fun and happy. Cars and Coffee of Palm Beach, the Guinness World Record holding Cars and Coffee event, 12-3, no, uh, no, December 3rd, 8 to noon at the Palm Beach Outlets Mall. Come out and meet some of the Street Outlaws. They're going to be there with us in our VIP area on the tour bus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your chance to meet them. You thought our autograph line for an hour and a half was long? Last month, wait till you see this month. And Palm Beach International Raceway, Chris Harrison, the great guy that's over there from the IRG group, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, let's reach out to touch somebody's life in a very positive manner. It's Christmas season. People are going to have packages in their hands and attitudes because they're tired. Don't let it bother you. Open the door for them, especially if you see an elder in a walker or they need help getting out of their car and near their wheelchair. If somebody has holes in the bottom of your shoes, or in my case, chewed up by the ladies' man, Diesel, if they have holes in the bottom of their shoes, which I don't, make sure you buy them a pair of shoes. Pay less is cheap, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a pair of yours that may be a close fit, as long as they're not too small. And if you see somebody who's hungry, ladies and gentlemen, stop. Feed them. There are homeless people at this time of year. We'll sit around the table with our family, and we'll have a wonderful dinner in a beautifully air-conditioned or heated house, depending upon where you live. McDonald's, 7-Eleven, Sitco, all of those places, Shell. Buy somebody a meal today, won't you, man? And let's finally remember, God entrusted us with these beautiful animals, man. Diesel's a part of our life. He has been since day one in 2009. He's tattooed on my arm. We have a responsibility to them. They bring us an awful lot of unconditional love. Let's take care of the animals. Let's not abuse them. Let's make sure we include them in their love. And until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, yes, Mr. Producer? James says he likes the show. James says he likes the show. James? We are humbled. Thank you, sir. We couldn't do it with all of you guys around the world. 22 million fans. That's what makes us number one. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Until tomorrow, let's keep on doing it. Bubba style. Hey, Bubba, let's grab something to eat. You want to? Yeah, one straight condo. Where's Toto? Toto.